Okay, what I would like to highlight at this point is method number three, uh, AC, multiply the leading coefficient in constant terms, and then we're going to end up with rational factors. Uh, really, it's we're going to end up with rational numbers, fractions, within our binomial factors, and we're going to use those to produce our ultimate result. And uh, don't be scared away simply by the word fractions. You may like this method the best, but there is a cautionary statement. You absolutely must factor the GCF first for this process to work. Um, you'll still get part of the answer if you don't, but you're going to miss that greatest common factor in the end. And that's really because I'm solving an equation. I'm doing something really sneaky. I've come up with a procedure based on solving an equation, and that procedure is derived from the rational zeros theorem. So please feel free to explore it more in depth with the rational zeros theorem. Nevertheless, I feel justified in doing this because uh, if a procedure works every time, what's wrong with that? I don't know. So if some of your instructors have a philosophical issue with this, then just do it behind their back and show them the right answer in the end. But let us now look at this example using what I'm calling method number three, and I'll explain it along the way. But the first step, taking my cautionary note, take out that greatest common factor. So it looks to me like we've done this before, um, mostly. There's a 10 as a common factor of all these numbers, 60, 110, and negative 350. So I'm going to take that out. There is also an x, at least a factor of x, okay, in everything. So it's a common factor. I'm going to take it out. And that y shows up everywhere, so I'm going to take out the y. And let's see what we're left with. After we do that, we got 6x squared plus 11x minus 35. Okay, I took out the xy. It's over here, so I don't even have anything left over there. So the xy I can sort of um, leave alone for a little bit while I explore my trinomial in the brackets. I'm going to start just like method number two by multiplying a times c. So in this case, what that gives me is, uh, let's see, 6 times 3 is 18. So 180 plus 30 is 210, negative 210. And now I'm going to look at the factors of negative 210 that also add to give me 11. So this part is still just like method number two. Um, and if this is a large number, this can get a little ugly. Uh, whenever I have something with a zero on the end, I always look at 10 times something. So let's try 10 times negative 21. That produces negative 11. So let's run that the other way around. Thankfully, we found the numbers relatively fast. Negative 10 times 21 uh, produces negative 210 when you multiply them. It also adds to positive 11. Now, the difference between this and method number two is what I do with these two numbers here. What I do with them is produce fractions within two binomials. Okay? These are going to become the numerators. Numerators okay. to the following two fractions. I'm going to go straight to the solution almost by producing two binomials. x, I'm going to use this as my numerator, minus 10, the minus because of the negative, over the denominator, it turns out, is always going to be the leading coefficient, 6. Okay, The denominator is always the leading coefficient. In parentheses, trust me, this is going somewhere. The next one looks like x plus 21 over, again, that leading coefficient. That's the same in both cases. Also notice that I didn't put any numbers in front of the x's. I just left them as x and x. So what that means is this is not, in fact, equal to my trinomial here. But it's getting there. And after I finish the procedure, it will be. So that's why I use an arrow here instead of an equal sign uh, for 1. So that's the first step. Use these as numerators. The denominator is always the leading coefficient. The next step is to reduce. You've created the fractions. Now reduce the fractions if possible. So I can reduce both of those by 2. This gives me a 5 and a 3. I can reduce these guys by 3, so that gives me x plus 7 over 2. Now the last step where it turns out that this is, in fact, equal to this trinomial here. Um, I'm going to use an arrow again 
just because with respect uh, to my greatest common factor. The last step is to drag these denominators up to the front of these x's. And it totally seems like a trick. I understand that. Um, again, I'm solving an equation. I'm using the rational zeros theorem. This procedure always works. Pull that guy up, and this gives me 3x minus 5. Pull this denominator up in front of the x. Gives me 2x. And then just leave the numerator as your other number. And indeed, 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 7 produces 6x squared plus 11x minus 35. So in the end, I can say this is all equal to maintain my greatest common factor, multiply by the other two factors remaining, 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 7. And there is the factored version. Let me show a couple more examples of method number three in the next video. And also, I want to do some additional examples to highlight the factoring by grouping technique. But this is the essence of it. Feel free to start trying it immediately.